I doubt you could even imagine it. Hello, guys. Hello, my friend. That which commanded the stars. Those kids are not going to go to college. Those kids are going to go to jail. Brilliance. Firefox is a very powerful browser. I switched from Chrome to Firefox, and why I believe you should do the same if you haven't already. Shattered by someone or something. Don't tell me you don't see it. Look up at the sky. It burns. Firefox, are you trying to piss off your entire user base? Every so often we talk about this slow in the Why are you using Edge? What are you even doing? Just use Chrome. I was watching on Lay YouTube the other day the video from the one and the only Techlore. And Techlore made this video about Firefox, and uh, I thought it was pretty good for the most part. Everyone knows the browser Fire Firefox, yes? It's the only brow other browser in the world that isn't Chromium. And uh, to download Firefox, I mean, you just go to mozilla.org slash Firefox. Uh, you'll, you'll get it. You'll be fine. Uh, it's in chocolatey. It's in homebrew. You can get it through your Windows, Mac, and Linux package managers. You, you download from their website or whatever. You'll you'll be fine. Uh, you can, there's even a flat pack for it if you're on Linux. If you're into that sort of flat pack and Snap, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. I want to talk about Firefox specifically, but I want to go a step further. So this is a virtual machine that I have, and this is just the Dora 35. And uh, when you boot up Firefox, uh, there's a lot of uh, how should I put this lightly garbage embedded into the web browser there's all sorts of stupid useless things inside here that you legitimately don't need like all this useless mozilla account stuff and then like you have to go in and change all these privacy settings the password manager and how pockets enabled that they collect information about you that's kind of really invasive and even more invasive if you're on windows because if you're on windows they actually have a scheduled task that runs in the background to constantly check if mozilla firefox is your default web browser or not which is kind of ridiculous <laughs> So if you're on Windows, you do need to disable a use task schedule or disable a thing. I'll link a tutorial below. As much as I like to complain and moan, uh, there actually is a solution to this. But the solution is sort of rooted in how Firefox is architected. So if you go to uh, about colon config, and uh, they'll give you a big spooky warning saying uh, this might impact Firefox's performance or security. But you're all smart ladies and gentlemen, you can figure it out. And then they give you this. Uh, now, this is a massive list of every single Firefox preference un ever created under the sun to configure Firefox. And while similar things exist in Chromium, and uh, no, only Firefox will let you configure it to such a degree that you can just remove all the stuff you don't like or add in stuff that you want. Uh, here I have uh, the GitHub page for what is called for the Arkenfox user JS, formerly known as the uh, G Hacks user JS. And uh, Arkenfox's user JS is maintained by uh, Thorin Oakenpants. She has been working on this project for literally eight years now, almost, probably even longer. Since like the dawn of like Firefox 52, she's been hard at work with numerous other people creating this. And the Arkenfox user JS is a template script which you use to configure Firefox to harden your privacy and security. Now, I do want to say here, uh, she makes the claim that uh, we don't endorse any of the activities here, but I'm sorry, hon, but you making some of this stuff the default is kind of crazy. Let me, let me what, what are you talking about default? In this file on GitHub is every single possible configuration option for Firefox that possibly has a measurable impact under the sun. Especially when you get down to some of the stuff here, which is just purely like stuff that you can do in the settings or whatever, or is kind of useless <laughs> because there's just legacy options. Like there's literally a section that says don't touch or like don't bother because they're just old antiquated options that don't mean anything. Much, much, much later. But don't worry about doing all this reading. 
I, I mean, as much as I like to encourage people to do reading, uh, I, I assume that some of you don't actually know what's happening, and you're afraid you're going, you're, you're, you're afraid you're going to click the big red button and destroy your whole web browser. And I am here to assure you, you do not have to worry about this because I read the wiki. I read the wiki, so you don't have to. <laughs> I developed a file purely containing these things. All right. These are, uh, these are what's called overrides. You can actually override. So by default, Ark and Fox make some, how should I put, they make some really asinine decisions about what, what you are and are not allowed to do. Like, oh, you know, something, something innocent, like typing into your search bar, uh, to search things. What a concept, right? No, you can't do that in Ark and Fox because you could type something wrong and it doesn't get sent to your inner, to, it gets sent to your search provider. It's like, and, it, and then your search provider is going to use it to track you. It's like, uh-huh, that's what I want to happen, uh, Ark and Fox. You're so stupid. Even the browser that you, that you supposedly say is better than your configuration, the Tor browser, lets people type stuff into the search bar. Ridiculous. So we're using the power of the wiki that you can create these little override buttons and then you just type in the preference you want to change and just change it. Pretty, pretty simple. Their explanation here is not that great. Uh, but if you go to uh, user overrides common, I'll put a link, link in the description down below. They actually give uh, some really comprehensive settings on what exactly uh, most people need. And as long as you stick with these, you honestly don't need to change anything about your user overrides file. This is my user overrides.js. And I actually have a link. <laughs> Yes, because I made this because I read the wiki and uh, I I made some very comprehensive uh, documentation which just explains everything in one sentence instead of like a million sentences. So, and I think this is pretty readable and all of these changes here are the exact same changes that you can find here if you want more information on why I made some of these changes. And I'll try to walk through some of these which actually weren't included in the in that original document anyway so and we'll sort of go through it when we get when we get there and uh what i'm actually going to do right now is i'm going to crack open a, a nice uh a nice fresh uh linux virtual machine because i want to just keep this separate from my normal browser so this is actually a this will be interesting because this is a virtual machine i just use to pay my taxes so uh if i get hacked i I know why now. <laughs> so have my user overrides file. It's on our GitLab page. Uh, so if you just go to the GitLab link down below, you can go and download it. Just download it. To, you can click the little download arrow and download it. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to hop back here. So what you're going to need to do is you're just going to need to uh, go to the GitHub page, GitHub, the GitHub link in the description, click on code and click download zip file. There you go. You did it. You downloaded, you downloaded the Ark and Fox. It was that easy. Unlike what a certain idiot on the internet told people. <laughs> so now that I have all of these together and I have here, so this is the, my freshly minted Firefox virtual instance. This is the fire. And I use this to pay my taxes. So uh, here's what you're going to have to do first. So the first thing you're going to need to do with, with this with this Firefox is and it, this, you could have this could be a fresh install of Firefox this could be uh, the Firefox install you've had since like the ins from like 2006 uh, you, it's it's pretty much the same just be up to date okay keep your stuff up to date so uh, click on the hamburger menu yeah right here over yonder and you should be able to see uh, sort of just the version of what Firefox is running just run make sure you're on the the latest version okay please be on the latest version if you aren't if you're on linux just use the one provided by your distro or by like snap the snap or flat pack you'll, you'll be those are the ones are always up to date so you'll be fine once you've got that all sorted uh what you're gonna want to do is you want to go to about so you're gonna type in the search bar about colon support and then you'll be presented with this big this big window over here and this might look a little different depending on which operating system you're running. I'm running this on Linux, but if you're running Mac or Windows, this should look exactly the same. So if you go here where it says open directory, so click on open directory, and this should open a folder where uh, this is where all of your Firefox preferences are actually stored. You can actually see where I actually set up mine here. 
So, and this is actually set up because I always set this up with every virtual machine I use. So I'm just going to delete those for now, just so we can start fresh. And I'm going to close Firefox. So close Firefox. You're not going to need it for the moment. And then what you're going to need to do is uh, you need to extract these files to, uh, to your desktop or, or somewhere, somewhere where you can get them. So next we need to... We need to actually just move all these files in. So if you're on Mac and Linux, you need to put in everything here which says .sh and the user JS and all the JS files. So you're gonna need, if you're on Mac or Linux, you need prefscleaner.sh, updater.sh, userjs. userjs, and uh, useroverrides.js. And you're gonna need all of those files. That's what I'm going to use. If you're on Windows, you're going to need updater.bat, prefscleaner.bat, and user and then the JS files. So user JS and user overrides.js. And you're gonna need all to put dump all those files into this folder right here. So because I'm on Linux, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag into here pref cleaners. I'm gonna drag in user JS, updater.js, and user overrides. And that's it. Uh for at least for now. So the first, next step you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to run each of these. So if you're on Mac or Linux, uh, you need to navigate to the folder. I'm actually just cheatsy and I can just right click and open a terminal. If you're on Mac, I'm so deeply sorry, but you're going to have to navigate to, to the folder that WinWord kindly put up on screen just now because I... <laughs> on, on Macs, actually what you can do is you can find the file and then you can hold down the option key and right click and say copy as path and you should be able to paste it as a path. Oh, okay. And you will need quotation marks around the path because it contains spaces. Great. If you're on Windows, uh, just double click these things and uh, you'll, you'll, uh, we'll, I'll get to the prompt where you'll see what ha shows up on Windows in just a bit. So I'm actually gonna view the folder here. So you'll see here that the only folder, the, the only file that's available in this, that can be executed right here is updater.sh. As you'll see it's highlighted in bash and green here uh but what i'm going to going to do is i'm actually just going to uh, uh give updater a run so it's dot slash updater.sh and enter and it's going to ask uh this script will update the latest user js and append any custom configurations from your uh user overrides.js continue <laughs> And I'm just going to say no for right now, because there's another step we need to do. So if you're porting this from an existing Firefox install, what you're going to need to do is you're going to want to do pref cleaner, run this file here, prefscleaner.sh. So when you run prefscleaner.sh, what you need to do is you need to set it to be executable. So remember, if I run this ls command here, you'll notice that this prefscleaner.sh is white. It's not green, because if it's green, that means we can run it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do chmod plus x uh, prefscleaner.sh and you can cheat a little bit and use your tab key to get where you need to do it. If you're, whether you're using terminal on Mac or whatever terminal in Linux you're running. So just hit print plus. Enter. And now you can see that the prefs cleaner is green. So then we're just going to give it a good run. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to run and remove any entries from our uh, prefscleaner.js here. This is actually where all of your settings in Firefox are stored. And then what this will do is this will reset all values that are normally used by the user JS here. And then uh, you need to also close Firefox. So that's why I said, gotta close Firefox. So I'm just gonna hit start. I enter typing in one and then enter. All done. And then uh, if you actually wanna go back, uh, they actually keep a, uh, a uh, backup of your of your prefs this little file right here so if you ever want to go back you can just rename this to prefs.js and delete the old one so now we have cleaned our prefs.js file what we need to do now is we need to uh, apply our updates and that's where that updater tool comes in from, from earlier so we're going to do dot slash updater.sh and then what this is going to do is this is going to create a new user js file that contains every change that we that i wrote in my file and then i'll run give a quick rundown of what each of those changes are now uh now that uh, everything has been fully fully sorted fully sorted so to speak so, I'm so to... all the updater script is doing is it's looking at your user.js file and your your user overrides file and whenever there's a discrepancy in between your preferences and your and your overrides file, it applies the overrides to the JS file. 
Exactly. To the normal user file. Exactly. And it and it makes a backup before doing that in case something gets messed up. Yes. Okay. So then you create. Now I'm going to crack open Firefox. I'm going to look at that. This looks exactly the same. Well, you'll notice that the window is actually different size from when I first opened it up. So uh, it's not uh, completely different. I'm just going to shuffle my windows around here just so I can make at least the preferences viewable and the window viewable at the same time. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try to run through at least some of the settings that I changed, at least from the user overrides, because you'll notice that some of the settings here are not the same that were in the original uh, user overrides uh, that were listed here. I did add actually add a few, and I want to discuss uh, those few because uh, I am an educated individual. I would never do anything to harm my own YouTube audience. Never. Liar! Front thing that I enabled because this actually breaks if you use the user JS by default. It is uh, DNS over HTTPS. Uh, I I believe uh, your internet service provider has no business in meddling with your DNS traffic. Uh, there is controversy that DNS over HTTPS does actually break tools like Pi-hole or like network filters or whatever, whatever. But I actually use a PF blocker, so which is a, a network-based firewall. But so that actually works despite what the fact that I use DNS over HTTPS. So. I, I don't know. It depends on what kind of tool you're using. I know this does break things like NextDNS or PyHole, so please just have... I mean, NextDNS is actually a setting here in Firefox, if you go to the actual setting. Uh, but the setting is actually broken as of right now because of what the user JS does. So you can actually replace this. So if you want to... Right, I use the default because Cloudflare is a default in the US and Canada. It's like fine, whatever. Uh, you, if you if you'd want, there's also Quad Nine, or you can use like Google. I mean, but why the heck are you using Google if you're going to be using Mozilla, right? <laughs> I mean, Cloudflare is even better than Google because you get better speed. So uh, that's why I just put Cloudflare there. So whatever, it's your choice what you want to put there. And I mean, you can even just replace it here. But this, if you put the setting in the user in my user overrides file uh, it, and you run the updater, it's permanent. Uh, disabling safe browsing, and I want to talk about this one. Uh, because this never gets talked about enough, okay? Uh, safe browsing is a function that's actually run by uh, Google and is embedded in every other web browser other than Chrome too. So you can say, well, I don't, I don't use a Chromium-based web browser, but if you use Firefox or Safari, you are still forced into using it. And in a weird sort of fashion, uh, this came actually came up a few years ago, uh, back before COVID, uh, Matthew Green decided he was going, he wanted to tackle uh, the concepts that Safari was actually phoning home data to Tencent instead of Google, which I thought was a little weird because I guess when you're in, when you were, you're based in China, you can't use Google. So safe browsing on Safari is replaced with uh, Tencent. So if you want more privacy in China, you should set your region to Hong Kong? No. No matter what region you're in, you should disable this garbage because this what this does is it sends information to Google or Tencent, depending on where you your region of your phone is set. You should not enable this setting, regardless of what where it is. And I'll we'll dive into a the the, the my point is if you use something like uBlock Origin, which I'm planning on doing something in the future about anyway, uh, uBlock Origin will block malicious websites and will functionally serve as your safe browsing substitute. So you should not need this. Plus, like if you're using like Quad Nine, Quad Nine will also block like malicious websites. So don't send all of your web traffic to Google, please. I beg you. The Git, this this one was not on the GitHub page either, but I do want to talk about it because I have experienced this myself. Uh, IPv6. I enable IPv6. And I know people are like, but it can leak my VPN or whatever. Uh, uh, that's only like how many percentage of people who actually do this. And second, I know people who are forced to only use IPv6, IPv6 only networks. I mean, to be fair, a lot of VPNs also protect against IPv6 uh, leaking if they're your good. VPN. Some VPNs aren't, and that's why I, I say you gotta act. You go be on the point of caution. Uh, not every, not all VPNs are created equal. So, uh, search engines. You can't search stuff in the in the original Arkenfox, but now you can't, just like you normally would in any other web browser. Uh, 
uh, search able suggestions, uh, disable auto suggestions because I hate auto suggestions. They're usually stupid. You can also let the predictive sentence technology complete the sentence for you. Ca browser caching. I mean, I've not ex actually experienced any performance gain from enabling this, but if you're a speed junkie, fine, enable it. Favicons. Why are favicons disabled by default? I actually have no idea. Stupid. All right, so containers. Yes, I, you, even though you, even though everyone knows there's an extension for it, uh, you can enable containers if you just hold and click or whatever. You can see them here. I use, I don't use them. Generally, the only thing containers are really good for is like if you want to uh, separate multiple different accounts. So like I have but, like what? But temporary containers. Uh, hang on a sec. So temporary containers, and this is actually a new feature that's been implemented in Firefox. And this is uh, total. There's what's called total cookie protection. So total cookie protection is a feature which uh, separates all of your cookies into one, like every every site's own individual cookie jar. And this actually solved like a huge gripe I had. Uh, in at least the means that I had to separate Microsoft Teams because disabling and enabling cookies for certain websites is a massive was a massive pain for me, and I would have to do it a lot on Brave. But uh, when I switched to using Microsoft Teams and Firefox, Microsoft Teams uh, in Firefox will actually give you a, a smart and will present you if you use Microsoft Teams and a web in Firefox to click on a thing which says, uh, do you want to enable cookie cross cookies on this website? And you just say yes. And then what that does is it makes it so you can use Microsoft Teams and have it linked to your Microsoft account and Teams will function properly like you'd expect in a web browser. I know that sounds incredibly confusing, but that's it works, I assure you. But this feature exists largely to protect people because scumbag companies like Meta will try to suck up information about you when you visit their web, like other websites, and they're going to try to use this to track you across the internet. But now because of total cookie protection, they're just imprisoned to their own little island with their own little cookies and their own little cache separated from so, everybody else. Let me get this straight. So the way the cookie used to work is I go to a website and I plop down all my cookies onto that website and say, here, website, this is everything I have. And they said, cool, which is way more information that they than they possibly should have had. And now I go to the website and I say, these are your cookies. I'm not going to share all of my cookies with you. Yep. Right. Yep. OK. You only get the cookies you need. The, the Why ones... did that? even take a while for that to be implemented why wasn't that by default because cookies are used by advertisers to track people of course that's stupid but even with this setting uh i still chose to uh, disable cookies no, to at least dis dis wipe cookies whenever you close firefox i'm gonna get into how to not do that in the future because you shouldn't actually have to touch any of these settings i just left these here for people's convenience of just turning them on and off uh, but with proper use of temporary containers, should you have to wipe your cookies every time so, you... No, not anymore because of the way total cookie protection works. So because okay. of total cookie, the way total cookie protection works, the only thing you really benefit from using these containers, the only thing you really benefit from having these now is to sign into multiple accounts at once. So like I have a Twitter account, right? So like, let's say I have a, I have a Twitter account, but like, let's say I also have the work Twitter account, right? Uh, I can sign into my own Twitter account with the personal container, and then I can sign into my work Twitter account with the work container because it's the same website and this will still keep the cookies separated from each other in addition to uh, the total I cookie have, protection. I have a counter to that that you can explain why it doesn't make sense. What about Google Analytics? If you didn't have uBlock Origin that wasn't blocking Google Analytics, Google Analytics is present on a plethora of web pages, and so Google is using that same cookie on multiple containers. So if you if you just relied on total cookie protection, Google could track you all over the internet. Other advertisers wouldn't be able to, but Google still Well, uBlock Origin still blocks internet requests, and it also blocks cookies. And well, and, I mean, analytics tracking cookies. And this is this is, gets into another point. This is actually this isn't listed in my config, but this is enabled by default. But uh, let me just visit a just a random website, getfedora.org. Right, uh, Firefox's own tracking protection is actually designed to block Google Analytics. 
So the tracking protection that's built into Firefox is able to block Google Analytics. The more you hear about cookies and about all of the ways that we're trying to block and get around cookies, the more it sounds like a cold war going on between advertising companies. Oh, and I delete history because who the heck needs history? I mean, you can, I mean, I suppose it is kind of security theater, but like, you know, whatever. I still, I would still get rid of it anyway. <laughs> WebGL, all right? WebGL is a security risk. It, like everyone should just disable it. it. It is terrible, but I understand some people need it. Uh, when I was testing this with a friend, uh, he found out that it broke 23 in me. So that is why I put it here. 20 now, granted, that is 23 in me is the only website I have found that breaking. Uh, Google Maps on one rare occasion, but that was like six years ago, and I have never seen that happen ever again. So I don't know. Uh, so if you do need to enable it, you can enable it here. All right. Uh, sign ons. Never use. Browser password managers, they're crap. Uh, it's funny too, because Mozilla told people to stop using their password manager because they aren't supporting it anymore. So never, can't trust Mozilla of your passwords anyway. Uh, so what is Mozilla switching to? Are they just not going they're just, to have- They're just not gonna have one anymore. Passwords? They're just gonna store it in plain text in your Firefox account or whatever. Because they Yay. used to use Lockwise, but now Lockwise is being discontinued. You look it up so if you want. backing backing up for a second, what does WebGL do? Uh, I don't know. No, but it's a security risk because it's a vector for a lot of uh, cross-site scripting attacks. So disable it. Uh, Pocket, I disable Pocket. This is not enabled by default in the thing. I hate Mozilla products. I hate Mozilla. I disabled everything related to Pocket. Goodbye. Get out of here. It's proprietary garbage. All right. Mozilla account. I hate Mozilla. No Mozilla account. Da All right, now this is a new one. I had to redo the whole video because of this one. Download stuff by default. If you, a few version ago, Firefox started, made it so that downloading stuff, when you download something, let's say I want to save this image, what this will do is this will just download it. You know, like, and just put it in the full, like, just put it in there, right? Uh, it doesn't do it quite so with images, but it certainly means something if you try to download something like, uh, let's say, this .exe file here, right? You'll notice that it actually just starts downloading immediately. And uh, this is this is the change they decided to make, literally just because every other browser does this and Firefox doesn't. I know some people prefer to just like the our old people and like the old way. So if you want to get the old way back, uh, just set this to false and. Uh, if you set this now, uh, it's also a setting. So if you go into the settings menu and then uh, you select, go to the downloads, the downloads pane, and then you click on always ask where to save files. It's essentially that, right? When you set it to false, it's just selecting that. So if you just, if I do the same download again, right? You'll be, it'll then prompt me uh, where I want to save my thing. So that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much all the settings. Uh, I, I got nothing else to say about the settings. I think that's all of them. Uh, it's a bit of a speed run, bit of a speed run. And of course, as per usual, uh, as, as part of the primer, uh, I want to talk about uh, saving logins. I said at the beginning, uh, we don't save logins here, uh, but there is actually a way to save your logins. I know this is a convenience angle for some people, and I do want to talk about this. So uh, let's say you want to... Uh, Log into, I don't know, maybe not YouTube. YouTube is a terrible example. Uh, how about, um, oh, that's a stupid rec Firefox recommend. Amazon, maybe? Amazon. Actually, Amazon's a great example. Why don't we use Amazon? So, every everyone has an Amazon. I have no Amazon links because I don't use Amazon. <laughs> All right. So, let's say you, you go to Lay Amazon. You want to. You want to you want to keep all of your stuff. So Amazon's actually pretty simple because Amazon's own login page is just Amazon.com. A lot of pages. So I'll throw another example out there. So let's say I want to go to uh, the New York Times. I hate the New York Times, but let's let's use the New York. Just play play along with me here, okay? The New York Times, all right? The New York Times is nytimes.com. But if you go to their, it's taking a while. If you go to their login page, you'll notice that their login page is myaccount.nytimes.com. So uh, please be cognizant of, you know, 
what domain you're actually saving. So like wherever the login panel actually is. So if I say uh, this is uh, Stuart Thompson is evil at nytimes.com, right? And then what this is going to do is this is act this is be where you would enter in uh, your account, right? So uh, what you need to do this is you need to actually save this one, not uh, just the generic uh, New York Times website. Because if you just save the New York Times website, that's not enough. You'd have to actually go to the account page to actually save it. Um, but I'll hop back to Amazon. I think Amazon's in mind of most people. That's at least simpler to understand. So let's say you log. Let's say you get through this page and you log into your Amazon account, right? Where, where does one go from here? So the first thing you can do is you can actually just click uh, Control I. Uh, Sometimes for some reason, at least at least for me, I always feel like it never works. But uh, if I mash it enough, uh, it eventually appears. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if you click Control I, you get this cute little uh, pop up window here, right? And then what you want to do is you want to click on this box here which says uh, permissions. You click on permissions. And then if you scroll down to the setting here which says uh, set cookies, right? And right now it's set to default. And remember when we when I went through the user.js, by default it deletes it af after you close Firefox completely. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to click allow instead, right? And then I'm going to close the window. And you have to refresh the page. You might have to log in again, depending on how their website is, works. I don't know exactly, but uh, you'll notice there's now this little uh, settings icon here, and it shows that Amazon is now allowed to save cookies, and you can stay logged into your Amazon account just like you normally would, because you shouldn't just leave all your cookies just hanging out. There's a large market of like criminals on the interwebs who steal people who just people's like cookies just stored in their browsers. <laughs> So like that is why I left it disabled because I like that. I view that as a feature. I don't log into everything all the time on the hour. So uh, there you go. Just to be just just for clarity's sake, if you had cookies enabled, you wouldn't have to do that. If you left if you had left cookies enabled in the uh, in the the overrides file. Yeah, well you Correct. don't have to, you don't have to change it, right? That's the yeah. This still works without changing anything in Ark and Fox, right? Uh, I'm actually keeping the default for cookie, the rules for cookies. And if you just do this, you don't have to like change the thing saying, "Oh, I need to allow cookies everywhere." You actually don't. You just do. You don't like, have yeah. Repeat the process, right? So if I do Control I, my account on your nytimes.com, go to permissions, scroll down, select set cookies, click on that, allow. And now stay logged into the New York Times. And uh, that's and that goes without saying uh, pr that's that's pretty much it. You did that. You have now demozilla your your Firefox. I know I know, that's that's really weird to say, but this is like demozilla your Firefox and de-googling your Firefox. And uh, once you do that, uh, you now have pretty much the best web browser you could ever ask for. You should use this. I know I made a video about Brave, and I believe there is a purpose for Brave, but I will be wholly honest with you, you guys, the vast majority of this time, I just use Firefox. Who, who like, I, like, the benefits of just, uh, Firefox are just too nice. I love, so, uh, if you go to the bookmarks, I'll, this is me just nerding out. So if you go to the customize portion, you, know, you can add, you know, every, you can actually customize the UI. A lot of other browsers, only, I think only Vivaldi lets you do stuff on this level, other than Firefox. So if you go to, uh, develop this little developer tool wrench here, uh, this little developer tool wrench is, is my best friend. I love using this when I'm doing stuff at work. Uh, I am not in web development or anything, but I, I do work in marketing. So uh, let me let me show you what this looks like. So uh, here I am on the GitHub page, right? Let me click on the wrench, and the thing I spam the most is responsive design mode. So if I go here, it gives you this little layout uh, which simulates what this website would actually look like on a phone. And if you want to go the extra mile, uh, you can even screenshot it. Uh, but you can also set your own user agent. So if I want to set my user agent to be something like, say, I don't know, the latest Samsung phone, for example, because Samsung is incredibly popular here in the United States and in the rest of the world. Uh, that's a great that's a great example uh, of Galaxy Note 7. 
uh, 22. Well, I, I mean the, the, the one that was blowing up. Oh. Well, who cares about that? <laughs> but, or even like uh, Safari on an iPhone, right? As a means of testing a website, right? Because you want to be able to verify uh, the view of things you're looking. And it's cool because you can actually just change the resolution of your thing too. Because I, as you, as most people know, a lot of phones are becoming wider, wider, and wider these days. So uh, you can even have like some of these little wide layouts. And then uh, it, it's a way of testing your website. And I think this is... A great thing and i wish chromium based web browsers included something like this it's kind of weird that they don't um but uh that's that's pretty much why i use firefox i love i love i love all of these things and uh, i'm going to make another video praising firefox in the future on how to use the ublock origin the ublock origin i'm turning into an old man all right. The U blocks origins is. So uh, that's that's it for the video. Uh, like the video if you hate Google Chrome. I mean, uh, like this video if you would like a alternative to Google Chrome, and subscribe for more Firefox content.